How are you feeling? You got John Riggs here at your service talking about Little Misfortune and nine other great Nintendo Switch games I've been playing recently. But before we get to this and the others, make sure you're subscribed. I do about two videos a week and I love covering great eShop games that you can get right now without even thinking about it. So Little Misfortune is a wonderful game that's pretty messed up. <laughs> <laughs> be honest with you. Uh, you play this eight-year-old, her name is Miss Fortune, and a voice says that she's going to die today. The thing is, she hears the voice, and he says, oh, well, uh, in that case, come with me, and if you basically don't die today, come with me, and at the end, I'll give you eternal happiness, which she likes because her parents are miserable, and she wants to give the eternal happiness to her mom. Well, as you move along in the story, it gets more and more messed up, uh, psychologically speaking. It looks like a children's game. It is not. This is for adults. There's language. There's uh, scenes that uh, aren't quite appropriate. Not going to go into too much detail, but every once in a while you'll run into like a fox who will kind of help you out, but you don't know if he's like your friend or your enemy, and you kind of piece things together along the way with the help of your narrator friend who's just, you know, this, this voice in your head, this mysterious voice uh, this coming out of nowhere, you know. It has light puzzle elements, and there's questions along the way, and at the beginning he even says, there's no right or wrong answer, only consequences. That's, that's pretty deep, man. It's one of those games, we already played through it, my older daughter and I did, and already want to play through it again just to answer different ways and you see the things that you could have used along the way. You can pick up items to use later, but you don't know if you need them or not. So it just, like I said, no right or wrong answer, only consequences. So hoping to see if there's a good ending to this game. But it's wonderful. I love the art style. Um, I love her voice. <laughs> it's it's interesting just to play, and I, I it's it's to me this is the game for now where I'm just like oh man this is this is the game you should check out uh, if you're up for it. The illumination, oh really interesting. What the golf? This is the name of this game. Um, if you were a big fan of like Donut County, this game uh, should be right up your alley. Yes, it's golf, but not in the conventional sense that you're used to. Uh, every hole is different. And what I mean er, different, I mean every hole is, you know, the first one is you don't actually have to get it in the hole for the most part. You just have to hit the hit the, the pole, the post, the, the flag thingy. But the more you play it, the more you're like, you know, instead of hitting the golf club, you're hitting, you know, items <laughs> in or, or instead of the in lieu of the ball and stuff like that. And um, it's just, uh, it's a fun game. It's one of those games you want to keep playing simple enough to play. You just aim and hit the button and uh, go for the best here. Uh, but it's just interesting enough, you just want to see what the next level is going to be. You just want to see what creativity comes with a game like What the Golf. And I th I just, I'm just tickled by games like this, so I'm happy to see that this is available for the Switch. If you already had your fun with Streets of Rage 4, you can check out TakeOver. It's a complete Streets of Rage ripoff and in a very, very, very good way. From the title screen, to the fighter selection, to how you play the game, to the music. <laughs> it's totally straight up Streets of Rage, and I'm okay with that, because this game's still pretty cool. I think it's still worth checking out. There's not much I can say about these kind of brawling type games. You have your punch, you have your kick, you have your jump, and you have kind of like your special attack. That's your desperation move. But this game actually has a few features that Streets of Rage doesn't have. Now, as you're going through beating up the bad guys, again, like I said, you can do your combo maneuvers on them. You're gonna, they're gonna gain up on you no matter what. You just gotta do what you gotta do to stay alive. And you can find power-ups, you can find items, you can find points, and so much more. Um, just, you know, scattered throughout these stages, which, by the way, are super long. There's a ton of stages, and they're super long. This first stage took me about 20 minutes to play through. That's just for one stage. I love the setting. I like the graphics, too. It reminds me kind of like when Super Nintendo was going through that experimental stage where everything was kind of like claymated. It looks like that, but super polished. So with your special moves, you can do your desperation move. That'll kind of, you know, save you in a pinch if needed. When you have so many strikes on other enemies without being hit yourself, you can build up this one meter with this super meter. And when you launch that, it kind of, you know, takes care of all enemies on screen uh, in capacity. You also have your rage meter at the top here. Um, when you activate this, you become super strong, uh, super powerful for a limited amount of time. And this is uh, worth keeping an eye on because it's going to save you several, plenty of time. And unlike Streets of Rage, you have a gun. You always have a gun. You, have, you pick up bullets along the way, but hey, if there's someone over there that just, you know, they keep blocking all your moves and all that, ah, you got your gun. You know what to do. Like the Streets of Rage games, the common enemies are super common, uh, but then the bosses might be kind of fun. They offer a little bit of variety anyway, so. If you love this style of game and you're all about that Streets of Rage lifestyle, TakeOver I think is definitely worth checking out. Yeah. 
I love it when they bring back these classic games with a new take, and this is Missile Command Recharged. Missile Command was a favorite of mine. Uh, I mostly played it on the Atari 2600. Uh, and this version is pretty cool. I mean, it looks fine. Uh, just for what it is. If you're not too familiar with Missile Command, you control this cursor, basically, and you have to kind of make these bomb explosions in the sky to deter the missiles that are coming down on your uh, on your buildings, whatever these are supposed to be down here. I think in the original it was like cities, but you know, this is, you just have to blow them up before they blow up your stuff. And uh, you know, including your weapon depot and you know, the items down here. And it gets pretty hectic after a while. It gets pretty, uh, you know, there's a barrage of things coming in from all angles. So it's pretty uh, difficult to kind of maneuver around with your cursor. Fortunately, for the Nintendo Switch, this game is touch compatible. So you can actually play this game, uh, if you're playing in portable mode, you can just touch the screen of where you want the missile to go, and you can do it that way. But also with the updated, you know, like, power-ups you can get along the way and things like that, um, pretty fun too, and super, super, super inexpensive. It's one of those games that's like, man, just, you know, a couple of bucks, and uh, just, it's good to have also on your Switch. A favorite of many, Railway Empire, now available on the Nintendo Switch. This is pretty cool, too. The Switch version has uh, the current DLCs, uh, Great Lakes, Mexico, uh, Crossing the Andes. <laughs> some, some cool things to consider when you check out Railway Empire, now available on the Switch. You know, it's kind of fun. It takes you back in the old kind of Wild Wild West days in a way but without all the fighting you're just trying you're just trying to build a railway uh you know through the forests through the mountains uh you know through uh, trees and you're just trying to you know it's 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 railroad building in a way and i mean it, i don't make it sound as cool as it actually is but hey it's super cool a lot of options you can do with this game i like the fact that you can kind of like swoop down on the cities to check them out as you build kind of your railroad empire, you get more money, you can, you know, get better railways, get more, you know, train cars and stuff like that. I mean, this is this is like for the true enthusiast here, uh, but also for people like me who just want to pick it up and have some fun. There's also a mode that's just, you know, like where money is no object or, you know, just puts you right in the scenario. You can do whatever you want. Like, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go over to Portland. I'll, I'll build a train station in Portland. Again, kind of cool. You can swoop around. Hey, there's Mount Hood. Perfect. The campaign mode is fine in this game, but I just like the again. I'm the same way with SimCity. Like I don't, I don't care about building the thing from scratch. I just want to jump right in there and have unlimited money and just have fun with this game. That's what it's supposed to be. It's all about just having fun. Um, you know, many people, like I said, love this game and love this style of game, and um, it's just fun just to play around with and see what you can do. And who knows? Maybe you'll learn a little bit of a history before you're done with this thing. It's kind of cool. Demon's Tier Plus is a 16-bit looking kind of twin-stick shooter. Uh, imagine Gauntlet if it was a twin-stick shooter, in a way. It's a little hard to differentiate this game with, I mean, let's be honest, there are a ton of games in the Switch eShop right now that all kind of look like this. Uh, but what I love about this game is, again, with the twin-stick shooter style, one uh, analog moves you around, the other analog uh, is just launching whatever your weapon happens to be, you can pick up other people along the way. You can purchase other companions along the way to play as. Uh, but when you first start out this game, all you have to do is just go in these little dungeon areas, defeat all the enemies, and then that's when the Reaper appears. <laughs> this Reaper is huge and super scary, and that's about as long as I lasted. All right. I'm going to have some more fun with Demon's Tier Plus, and uh, I encourage you to do the same. Masky was one of those games I just happened to grab just because it looked kind of colorful, it looked kind of fun, I knew nothing about it until I played it, and I'm glad I did. It plays like a long version of a WarioWare minigame, <laughs> if that makes sense. So you play the center character, and you have to move left and right to pick up your other characters. Now think of the middle thing like you're balancing in a manual on, like, Tony Hawk. If you go too far to one side or the other, you lose. And you're going to lose a lot. But after a while, you kind of get the hang of it, you kind of get the balance of it, and you can get, like, a pretty nice string of people uh, left and right. And, of course, if you have more on one side than the other, then it weighs a little bit more on the other side than the other, so you have to, like, you know, compensate with your analog a little bit extra. Um, it's, it's kind of addicting. You just have to see how many you can grab on this thing, and you can move through the door and actually move on to the next stage. But every once in a while, there'll be, like, a, like, oh, no, now you can't see the balance beam, or no, no, ever, you know, instead of being black, there everything's white you know it just things to throw you off too but masky is an interesting one to say the least him and her is a game where you play as him and you try to get to her 
well, that's easier said than done, I suppose. Uh, you're on these little square planet type things, and if you walk off the edge, then everything rotates. Well, and you have to use that to your advantage, and sometimes it's to your disadvantage. You can jump, which is handy, but sometimes you gotta really use your noggin to see, like, well, if I'm here and there, there, but there's a platform down here, I can jump down there and then rotate the screen so they're, you know, upright and everything. And then when you just, uh, you know, when you touch, then you can move on to the next stage. Just about every one of these eShop compilation videos I do, there's usually a game like this in there, and all for the same reason. It's the perfect other game to have. I mean, because you can't just be playing one game and that's it. I mean, maybe you can. Uh, but I like having the alternate games. Like, ah, oh, man, the, the, the game I'm really focused on right now, the Xeno whatever, the Bioshock or something, it's like, you just want to take a break from that, but you still want to play something. And this is that something. And I think it's pretty neat. I like games like this. Kind of taking it all the way back to the Game Boy DMG with Awesome P2. Well, what can I tell you about Awesome P2 other than the fact that apparently there's a first one that I never knew about. Uh, but this game looks like a Game Boy game. And it's just one of those, you got your jump, you got your double jump. Uh, if you die, you start at the beginning of the level and you just keep moving until you get to the end of the level and you move on to the next level. And that's Awesome P2 in a nutshell. <laughs> or a pea shell? I don't know. Another one of those games, there's a ton of stages on this one, so looking forward to uh, playing this through the end. Summer in Mara, well, every once in a while there's gonna be games like this for the Switch. And now this is gonna be your alternate to not quite Animal Crossing, but more like uh, Sim Farm. What was that? What's that farming game? Farm Together? Farm Together. Uh, so this game maybe plays a little bit more like a Farm Together, kind of. I mean, I love how it looks, but this game really focuses on crafting, on farming, um, you know, you just have to get the tools you need for whatever you're working on, whatever your project happens to be. You start off in this little island here, but you move on to, there's other islands, and you can, you know, move from there too. Um, kind of fun, kind of relaxing. Like I said, it's, it's all about that crafting lifestyle, and if that's up your alley, then I think Summer of Mara uh, will be up your alley too. It's okay, and um, and I had some fun with this one for when I played it. And Lily liked it too. Yep. What's your favorite part, Lily? Swimming. The swimming? <laughs> Anytime there's a game with water, Lily's always like, jump in the water. <laughs> Just to see if you can swim. You can, you can swim in Summer of Mara. Yes, you can. <laughs> and we have a lot more eShop recommendations for the Nintendo Switch right about there, so make sure you click that. Uh, we do about one or two of these a month. There are so many great Switch games through the eShop. Many of them are cost efficient, so you know make sure you check out this link right here and um, check out some of the, uh, the, the previous games. Maybe you missed out on them, and we'll see you again very soon. Thanks for watching. Very soon. Thank, thank you for being you. <laughs>